Hello folks and welcome back to Medieval Total War. I am Kana Step and this is going to be part 14 of my early campaign where I'm playing as the Danes. And I don't want to spend too much time on the intro for this episode just because we have ourselves some new neighbors here. And these Mongols might attack this turn. I don't know what they're going to do. The fact that they still have a lot of their forces here in Khazar and have also split off and taken Ryazan and Volga Bulgaria as well. It's interesting. Yeah, it is. Also, the Turkish Sultan is trapped here in Paris Lavel. And, um, yeah, that can be a little bit bad for him. I wonder if he's going to get attacked from Khazar. I don't know what the Mongols are going to do here. They typically go after the human player. They typically do. So I have to prepare for that. I have to imagine that's what they're going to do. And I have to imagine that they're going to attack Lithuania in this turn. So I'm going to prepare for this as if that's what they're going to do. Um, if that's the case, then I'm just going to be playing this one turn for this episode just because the battle will probably take a while. I can start building this ballista towers here for the keep here in Lithuania just, just in case. You know, I, I don't intend on losing this battle, but if I do any defenses on this fortification that I can get are going to be good. It's only, gonna, it's only gonna take two turns to build that, so uh, yeah, I just add a bit of extra firepower to my defenses. As far as my soldiers that I have, my armies, like you know, it's it seems like it might be okay. <laughs> um, you know, it's it's what I got. It's what I got. I you know I have feudal knights with uh, the armor upgrade. I think it's the second armor upgrade. Yeah. So, they, you know, they're okay. They're an okay heavy cav, and I do have feudal sergeants, you know, decent spearmen. I do have some chivalric sergeants, not too many. In fact, where can I find some? Yeah, here they are. And these guys have just a single plus one armor upgrade. So, yeah, I got them. You know, I have my Viking Huskarls. I have my crossbows. You know, I, I have a six-star general. He's capable for sure. So I don't know why I'm so nervous. Perhaps it's because the last two battles versus the Turks didn't go so well. Um, maybe that's why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm a little bit nervous here. But, you know, got to gotta, gotta, gotta go through with it. Have to win. Uh, Novgorod, you're going to just continue training chivalric sergeants. Um, there's no more upgrades available for soldiers at this tier of building. I could go for Citadel. It's going to take 16 turns to build that Citadel. So what's really the point in rushing that, you know, so I can get better upgraded armor and morale for my spearmen? I think in 16 years, the war between myself and the Mongols will be decided. So what's the point, right? I may as well go for money. I may as well start building the Merchant's Guild there. And yeah, why not get a farm and upgrade as well after that? Finland, you're going to keep building boats. In fact, I think I have a new boat that's been finished. Yeah, another caravel here. I can send you down. I think I am starting to get some boats in the um, Eastern Mediterranean, I think. Let me double check that. You go um, here, and then you go. So yeah, I have two boats in these two regions. That's good. And now I can start moving back into... Um, let's see, I think... What I'm going to do, yeah, you can go here, and then I can bring down you as well, so just so I have two boats in that region. Yeah, that's that should be fine. I just want to make sure the Egyptians don't attack me. Again, they don't, do they have any boats in the water right now? I know that there was a Dao that was sunk in a storm. So yeah, maybe they don't have any boats in the water. Nice, cool. Alright, so yeah, let me just continue doing it that way. Get another two boats and go here, and then here, and then I should be set. Yeah, that should be fine. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to play this cautiously. I don't want to get into another war here. The Egyptians, I'm surprised they're being so passive. You know, they have their domain settled by the appearance of it, but they're just kind of letting the Turks hang out here in Nicaea, and I don't know why. You know, and same here in Georgia. Like, they... Egyptians could take this. Now that the Mongols are here, like, sure, just just let this be a buffer. But, you know, the Mongols are going to take that, no problem, right? So, 
you know, I would imagine they would. In any case. Back to my regions. Uh, Prussia is going to continue to train uh, archers and crossbows. And... What should I do now? Um, more armor, I guess, for those troops would be good. Yeah, more armor. And... No, 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 I just finished building the castle so I can get a Boyar's Guild. Yeah, that's going to allow me to build Arblusters. Yeah, 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 six turns, and I can start training Arblusters. Nice. Yeah, that'll be very, very good. And Pomerania, you are still working on a castle. Yes, you are. Saxony, you are also working on a castle. Currently, you are training Royal Knights, just so that I can get some heavy cav in these regions. Uh, Saxony... Pomerania and Prussia are a little bit deprived of that. I'm sending all of my feudal knights to Lithuania and Novgorod just just because these are my easternmost regions, but I still want whatever heavy cav I can get, you know, in these regions. So I think Pomerania and Prussia should be next. So yeah, keep training those. Yes, you are. Good, good, good. And Denmark, just keep training the good ones, the Feudal Knights, yeah, just keep going with that. And I do have my four-star general retrained. Yeah, he can go back to being the general of Novgorod. Those are my best guys. Him and then this six-star here, those are my best two generals. Ugh. Um, Sweden, you are going to continue to retrain the Viking units that are trained here in Norway. And yeah, that's good, you are both working on... Uh, armor upgrade here in Sweden, and then a citadel here in Norway. That looks good. Okay. All looks good. My king is getting old. Yeah, he's 53, and his next in line, his son, is 25, and he is married. So, maybe he will have a son by the time he becomes, becomes king. I'm also looking for a wife for my um, second son as well. My emissary is down here working on that. And then my princess is trying to get a ceasefire with the Germans because when they took over the French Empire, when they collapsed, they went straight on and attacked me. Now, they did not go through with their attack, but still, the war has been started. And now I need to try to get that ceasefire with them because that was annoying. You know, the Germans have so many other, like, goals right now. If you look at the Germans, uh, the Hanseatic League, no, not that one, the Holy Roman Empire... They could be attacking Milan, or Rome, or Naples, or Tuscany. You know, all of these could be targets for them. But no, they attacked me. In fact, what else could they be targeting? Homelands. Provence. Brandenburg. Saxony. Yeah. Uh, Provence. Yep, the Italians. They could be attacking them. Saxony. Oh, that's why. Okay. <laughs> that's why. Yeah, Brandenburg. But that's... See, look... Bradenburg is a homeland's objective, just like Saxony is. Look how many soldiers are there. Come on, you would attack me? Come on. <laughs> Seriously. <sighs> anyway, alright. Whatever. They chose they chose to fight me. Anyway. I said I wouldn't make the intro long, and I'm already kind of going on too long here. So, uh, just in case this battle goes on for a very, very long time, if they do attack, I'm going to try to keep these uh, between turn chats uh, to a minimum okay here is the moment of truth let's go through with it let's end this turn let's see if the mongols attack me they would still have to leave us uh, at least one stack in kiev to maintain the siege it doesn't appear like they attacked me and the italians are going for milan i'm happy about that yeah that's one of the rebel provinces that was left behind and yeah, the Germans keep attacking me. God damn them. I mean, they're, yeah, they're not going to go through with it, but yeah, nothing's changed, guys. Um, so yeah, the Turks, Turkish Sultan was, y y you know, he was killed. <clears throat> and he had like all of his sons in that province with him. He had, I saw two more that were in Crimea, so I think they're going to survive there for now. But um, yeah, it's going to get pretty dicey for them. All right, the... Armors Guild has been finished here in Sweden. That's good. And um, the Hungarians want an alliance. I mean, yeah, sure. I have no reason to turn that down. I have no intentions on attacking the Hungarians. So, yes. 
And yeah, the the Holy Roman Emperor does not want peace, which sucks because I would like to be able to trade with them once they take back these port cities. Um, all right, anything that's any starred generals? I'm not seeing. No, doesn't really matter. If you're not a governor and you're not a starred general, then it does not matter. So the Mongols did not attack. Okay, interesting. They do have Chernigov now, and yeah, yeah. I don't know. Um, they're not that banged up. <laughs> they really aren't. They're not. And it's curious that they did not attack Kiev. So that's just going to take one more turn for this garrison to fall. And I think that the Turks... Where did the Turkish Sultan go? He's not in Crimea. Where, where is he? He's down here and I see it. Holy shit. So this is the most built up region. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, I think they still... Do they have one more heir left in the Crimea? Yes, they do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. So the Egyptians could take out the Turkish Sultan here, and then the last heir would have to, you know, be crowned here. Well, no, not in Nicaea. It'd be crowned here in Crimea, right? Or Rhodes. I don't know what... No. They don't have enough buildings there. Huh. Yeah, we might see the Turkish reemergence wiped out. Surprised that he wasn't crowned here in Georgia. It seems like they might have more stuff there than here in Nicaea. It's pretty close, I suppose. As far as which province is built up more. Interesting. Okay, well. Well, well, well. I, you know, I still think the Hungarians make a better target to be attacked by the Mongols than I do. But, <laughs> we'll see. Man, it's getting, it's getting down to it, isn't it? Yeah, how long before this falls? It's going to fall this turn here. And then these armies are going to be freed up. Hmm. I'm not even planning for an attack on Novgorod. So, like, you know... That'd be kind of, kind of wild if that happens. I really thought the attack would happen here, so we we will see. Maybe, maybe both places, you know. Maybe I need to start thinking about that. Um, it's easy enough for me to transfer soldiers there, you know. So I, I don't have to think about that until either Muscovy or Smolensk has been taken. So we can wait for that, and then we can prepare accordingly. You know what would be really funny is if there was a French reemergence like right now that happened within the German Empire. Yeah, I wonder if there's a possibility of that. Like in Champagne, for instance, like if that could happen, or Aquitaine, or Brittany. The English have taken Normandy, so good for them. Um, yeah, I wonder, because the threshold is 120%. Anything lower than that is a potential place for a French reemergence, um, you know, so like Milan, I think, was owned by the French, right? And yeah, Tyrolia would be, you know, a place where it could happen. Yeah, there's uh, there's an option <laughs> that that would be funny. That would be interesting. That could take some of the heat off of me because they might continue to attack and they might actually go through with an attack one of these years or one of these turns just because yeah they seem to really want Saxony and they, they have numbers they do I think that my forces would beat them in combat and that might be what it takes right is to beat them and kind of punch their faces in and be like hey leave me alone you know stop stop doing this and then they might take the ceasefire or or um you know we might need like a French reemergence to kind of show them you know, what's important to worry about right now. And they should be thinking about their own, like, realm and, and not me right now. Um, where is the German emperor? I lost him. Where do you go? I wanted to check his influence. And he is... Oof, man. I, it's hard to see sometimes. There he is. He has a lot of influence. Holy moly. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. Huh. He's old though, isn't he? Um, I don't think that matters for the Germans. They just re-elect a new, a new guy. I'm not really sure how that works, to be honest. I've never played as the Germans. So yeah, I don't know if they, like, they can obviously be killed off. I just don't know, um, yeah, how, how that, like, election mechanic works for them. Um, yeah. 
Let's make sure there we go. That's good. And that's good. All right. So yeah, we might face another attack from the Germans. We might face an attack by the by the Mongols. You know, things are getting interesting for sure. Yeah. This is um Let's just hold our breath here and see what happens. Okay, so the Mongols are going after Muscovy. Okie dokie. So they will be on my border if they win that battle, which they probably will. The Hungarians are taking Corsica? What? And yeah, the, the Novgorods have retreated from Muscovy. Okay, I have Mongols on my border of uh, Novgorod. And the Egyptian Sultan has died. Okay. Uh, my... Ballista Towers have been finished here in Lithuania. And my Master Merchant has been finished here in Finland. I think that's my highest tier merchant building, so... Finland, Finland will be making me some dough. And yeah, the Holy Roman Emperor really does not want... Peace. And the Italians would like a little sum sum. Hmm. I don't mind this. Yeah, I was trying to get... Actually, that's what I was trying to do anyway. This was my idea, Italy. My emissary is just trying to find Princess Sophia and ask her for her hand in uh, marriage. Um, because they're the ones offering, that means that there would be an alliance between myself and the Italians, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, I have no intention of attacking them. So, let's take that. Let's see, Lord Lofsen, Gentle Knight. Plus three morale. Unfortunately, you are not a, a, a starred general, so that doesn't really matter. And yeah, there we go. Okay. All right. It, it feels like it has to happen now, doesn't it? Now that the Mongols have um, two provinces here that are bordering Lithuania, and then, then one province here that is bordering Novgorod, it's they don't. It's they're a little bit spread out, aren't they? You know, like here, sure, they, they could get a, an attack in. Um, I don't know how strong that attack would be. I don't know. I feel like Lithuania can handle this. And I feel like Novgorod can handle this. You know, three stacks. It's Don't get me wrong, it's a lot. But, you know, basically, just we're thinking about the nine units of the Mongol Heavy Cav. The rest of it can be weathered, as long as I can find a forest to hang out in and just weather the Storm of Arrows. That would be fine, it's just the nine units of Mongol Heavy Cav, as long as my lines can hold throughout that, um, I should be fine. So, hmm, yeah. Let's leave this chivalric sergeant here in Novgorod, let's not move him down to Lithuania like I have been doing. Let's bring over a Feudal Knight. I know I already have more here, I think. Yeah, I do have some Feudal Knights here. And I do have some Huskarls here. Yes, I do. I have some Landsmen, you know, I have some Crossbows. I feel like I can bring some Javelins up there and some more Crossbows up to Novgorod. And, yeah, I, I, I think that's going to be okay. You know, let's bring some more Vikings, why not? Yeah. This feels like the moment of truth, you know? Like, will they go for me or will they go for someone else? I am now ready for another intern, and I just wanted you to join me for this one, just in case, you know? I feel like the interns... In this episode, are a little bit more important just because this is when all the action is happening, right? So, uh, yeah, we can see if there is going to be an attack. The Germans did not even feign an attack in that last intern, which is interesting. It's almost like they're giving up on attacking me, maybe. Fingers crossed, we'll see. Man, a lot going on. Yeah, Italy is going for Milan. I like to see that. Unfortunately, the English are dealing with unrest here in Wessex. Yeah, they should be able to deal with that, hopefully. I'm rooting for you, England. I really am. I'm rooting for you. It would just suck if there was a French re-emergence in uh, Wales. <laughs> I'd just be like, God damn it. <laughs> you know? Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Prince of Novgorod has died, but his heir has taken over. 
Command. And same with the Elma Heads. Citadel is finished here in Norway. Now I can... I think I just want that Master Merchant building, I think, is all I really want there. And it's all uh, generals here, so let's see if it's anyone important. Let's see, nothing. Nope. Nope. No, and no. Okay. Good, because I saw some bad ones there, so I'm glad that none of those happened to someone important. Still no attack. Wowie, wow, wow. That's very interesting. The Mongols are, are not being the, um, the world beaters that I've come to know. You know? Like, it's like they just, you know, they're not going to do this because they know I have them outnumbered here in Novgorod. And it's same here in Lithuania, I suppose. You know, they seem to be spread a little bit too thin. I also, I've heard that I think sometimes the Mongol invasions come out in different uh, amounts of strength. Frankly, I've never counted the stacks. I never have. So I, I don't know how true that is. But just based on what I'm seeing right here, this might be a lighter Mongol invasion. You know, this might not be as as numerous of, as uh, other ones that I have seen. So yeah, may, maybe, right? So I'd like to hear your opinions on that. You know, do the Mongol invasions sometimes come in smaller or stronger uh, incursions yeah let me know this one seems maybe a little bit weaker maybe I, I don't want to say it's you know over and that's done and that this is it but I almost start to I'm starting to wonder you know because I have other plans for this campaign I can't, I'm not just going to sit here and like wait for them to attack me I was doing that and now that it's the time and it's not happening now I'm like alright well damn I was going to look at other places to conquer um this is where my conscience gets the better of me because, like, man, I was—I really wanted to conquer England at some point, and just to like kind of, you know, do, do the Dane thing. Like, I know that uh, this time period, the Danes weren't really conquering England anymore, but there's there's some ancestral stuff there, right? Like, there's definitely some ancestral justification for going back over and taking on the uh, the English Isle. But typically it's held by the French by now, and it's really easy for me to justify that and be like, all right, time to take France down. But now I'm like, oh man, I want to take out the English. Like I've been rooting for them literally the entire campaign. And uh, yeah, they're my ally too. So, um, ha, huh, yeah. So, <laughs> hmm. Yet... I, is there other options? <laughs> Let's see. Sicily too. That's another place I wanted to kind of go to. Just because of, you know, like, just kind of doing the, the Norman thing and like, you know, just because the, of the Normans also having um, Danish Viking ancestry. So like, the fact that the Normans took, you know, came down and took out Sicily and, uh, it ran that for a while, like maybe I was thinking about Sicily and Naples, but now those are being held by the papacy, so that doesn't seem like something I want to do right now either, you know, <laughs> like that seems like a really bad idea is to go to war with the papacy. Yeah, I don't, gosh, that's kind of what I was thinking, it was like Sicily, Naples, and then England, so... Um, for the time being, I, I, like, obviously those are my allies. I'm pretty sure I'm allied with the papacy as well. Yes, I am. Okay, well, here's the thing. There will be opportunities throughout this campaign to break my alliances with these factions, you know, when factions go to war with one another. Um, there will be opportunities to say, like, hey, do you, you want to still be allies with them? And maybe, just maybe you know, there will be a time when I can say, okay, let's just break this alliance with the English, therefore I can attack them without, you know, getting an influence hit on my king. Right now, he's only had an influence of four. He's getting pretty old, so, like, he's not going to be around for a while, but, yeah, four, four is not good. Um, so him losing influence by attacking an ally is, would be a bad, bad thing. And yeah, unfortunately, my diplomatic options are a little bit limited in this game, right? Like, I can't really just end an alliance the diplomatic way. The only way to do that is by attacking or by, you know, um, 
breaking a treaty when they go to war with someone else. So, yeah, we'll just have to keep an eye on it. Like, if the French come back, if there's a re-emergence here and they took, take over the island, I can justify it that way. If the whole Holy Roman Emperor goes to war with the English, um, they don't. Ha they have no reason to. That's the problem. The Holy Roman Emperor's glorious achievements goals take them in this direction, you know, against the Italian peninsula, and it takes them northerly against me and the Poles. So they don't have any reason to go after the English. So I, yeah, I don't know. We'll keep an eye on things, and in the meantime, I mean, it's, it's going to be a long campaign. So like in the meantime. I'm not going to rush things along. I'll just continue to work on my economy and building stuff up and making sure that I'm good. Um, I am only making 2,600 florins, which does not feel great. I would like to make more money than that, considering that I'm making only 2,600 florins, and these are the only two regions where I don't have boats. So I'm only missing out on one port. And considering that I'm neutral i'm not at war with the rebels so like rebel factions like I sh i'm trading with aquitaine and Brittany, you know um and navarre at least that's my understanding of things because i am neutral with the rebels yeah so th that's interesting yeah i'm only at war with the turks and the germans so how many ports am i missing out on here one Is there a port in Friesland? There's not. So I'm only missing out on one port due to my war with the Germans. Hmm. That doesn't feel like enough of a reason to attack the Germans, if I'm being honest. And then the, with the Turks, how many ports have I been missing out on? Zero? They have zero ports. They have one in Rhodes. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, nothing in Georgia. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't... It's it's weird that I'm... Not making that much money, considering... Maybe, maybe the factions just don't have the money to... To build a lot of ports, you know? Maybe that's why. Yeah. Like, the fact that Egypt doesn't have a port is a little bit weird. And Antioch as well. You know, like, these are supposed to be some of the richest provinces in the game. And they don't have ports here. It's like, oh, come on. Come on, AI, do better. You can do this. You got this. So, yeah, maybe, um... Maybe I don't freak out. Maybe I just have 153,000 florins in my treasury. And that should be fine. I'm still in the positive. I'm still making money, despite the fact that I have enormous armies. Um, and yeah, maybe just over time, other factions will stabilize and build more ports and I'll make more money that way. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just as I suspected, <laughs> the French reappearance happens here in Wales. Um, there, okay. So it's not just happening here. There's three provinces being attacked and then there's nine provinces that are joining them. So that's probably going to be within the German Empire, right? I, I would imagine so. Maybe some in uh, Iberia, perhaps, as well. Yeah, that's that's big. That's going to shake things up again. Uh, yeah, wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's really, really big. Alright, let's just go through this real quick. Um, one star general. Okay, yep, that's fine. Okay, nothing too consequential there. Let's go back to the exciting stuff. All right, goddamn, poor, poor England, poor England. Uh, yep, Ireland's being taken over, Wales, and then there is going to be an attack here in Mercia, but then also Champagne. Yep, Brittany, Aquitaine. Holy shit! All the way down here, Castile, Valencia, Aragon, Navarre. That's a lot. <laughs> and then, um, wow, yeah, it's, it's interesting how it's like sprinkled throughout the German Empire, you know. But then not just them, it's also like, you know, it's sprinkled within the English Empire and uh, luckily none of these provinces, well luck luckily for the French, none of these provinces were, were owned by, you know, the Almaheads or, or the Spanish, like no one took these provinces, which is a missed opportunity, but you know, there you go. So, now 
are the Germans going to want to get a peace treaty? You would think that they would want to get a peace treaty. So, let's see, I don't have to, let's not send you, let's, or yeah, sure, you can, you can go talk to them. If we can get an alliance, that'd be cool. Yeah, let's see if we can get a ceasefire or an alliance with, with uh, the Germans, either or is fine with me. And are they currently at war with just, just me, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna change, guys, so... And yeah, the, the French reemergence, hot damn, you know, like that's... Let's see, okay, so, meh, like nothing too... A lot of hoblars, holy shit, that's a lot. Ooh, the French king sucks. Decent influence. I think, you know, that comes... So, like, these big reemergences that take over a lot of regions, maybe their influence is just coming from that. Although, I don't know, because these don't... I don't think these count as being... Hmm. I feel like the provinces that are in dispute don't count as being French yet until this battle actually happens. But then these ones, like, probably are French, right? Yeah, because the borders on this are black, the borders on this are blue. So that, yeah, that makes sense, right? Okay. So yeah, I, I wonder if that influence is just coming from that. Because I've seen Reemergence King's influence that they only get, like, you know, like one or two uh, provinces joining them, and they're re their influence is pretty pretty bad. So, uh, this is a decent army. You know, feudal men at arms, and feudal sergeants is, is solid. Yeah. So yeah, they're gonna be able to take over England, is what it looks like. And this is good as well. Mounted sergeants and feudal feudal knights. Yeah, they're they're gonna be able to take over England. These armies are, are gonna be stuck on Ireland unless they build boats at some point. So, but these were just the previous like French armies from before. So. Yeah, there's that. And then same here. These are just the previous French armies. Um, yeah, yeah, that's all these are. This is looking pretty good. Jesus. Pavis, Arblusters, Chivalric men at arms, Chivalric sergeants, and halberdiers. God damn, that's a. What army is that? Is that a previous French army? That's a pretty decent high medieval army. Both of these are. Huh. That looks like a reemergence army. That's what that looks like. Yeah, the Germans should really want to... Oh, it's interesting that Champagne went over to France without needing an army. I guess, same with Aquitaine and Brittany. Yeah, that's that's kind of interesting how that works. Oh, no, they do have armies. It's just inside of the castles. Okay, yeah, I was just being stupid. Okay. Still, these factions don't have army, or these provinces don't have armies, but then Champagne does have something here. Okay. But the Germans don't have much, like, nearby. You know? Like, the French will be able to hold Champagne, at least for a moment. Yeah, interesting. Wow, cool. Very cool. That should help me out. Now that the Boyars Guild has finally finished being built here in Prussia, now I can finally start training my Arbalesters. And I think it is time. Yeah, construction cost is going to be 275 as opposed to the 200 Okay, so it is a bit more expensive. Uh, upkeep is the same, though. Okay. But I think they're just so worth it. I mean, Arbalesters are such a good unit. Very, very deadly. I, I can't... You know, it's funny. I, I feel like I've heard and like seen folks say that the Arblusters shoot slower than crossbows. I don't know if that's true. I, I need to like double check that and look that one up. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like they shoot at the same rate, but they might be slower. I, I would have to double check that one. But they are, they're stronger. Yeah, they're stronger and I don't think they are affected by the rain at all. Um, maybe a little bit, but like less so than the crossbows. They're just a really, really good very, very good unit, so... Yep, let's stop training crossbows and let's start getting my Arblusters going. The Boyars Guild also allows me to start um, training Pavis crossbows. So it's basically just a, a normal crossbow man that has a big old shield on him. Um, they're definitely useful. The It gives them, you know, extra defense and extra block chance, so it gives them a better chance of winning skirmisher duels. It does make them a lot slower, and I would say that 
uh, on defensive battles where you have the reinforcement rally point right next to where your army is typically going to be stationed, um, they are easier to use. If you're using Pavis units on an attack, it's a bit harder just because, you know, they have to march across the entire field of battle. And by the time they get there, they're going to be so tired that their morale is going to be so low. So Pavis units are harder to use on attack. Um, maybe like on the initial like the initial stack, the initial wave of units, but then as the reinforcements, just keep them all as non-Pavis units, I think would be my my advice. But yeah, Pavis units definitely can be useful. I might I might train some of them, but then again, like I don't know. Because I might the thing is by the time I'm going to get some Pavis crossbows out, I'm going to be able to start training Pavis Arblusters, you know? So, yeah, it's a bit it's a bit complicated, but how much how much do they cost? 225. So the only 25 florins more to train than a regular crossbow unit. And the support cost is the same. Interesting. Yeah, we'll see. Right now I just want Arblusters though. And then what next? I probably want a Merchant's Guild. Yeah, it's time to go back and switch switch back to the money, you know? I also think it's time to finally start training spies. I've been waiting, I've been putting this off far, far too long. I've just been using a Livonia to train uh, bishops, so I have, you know, a view on the rest of the world, but uh, I've been neg neglecting my own territories. Um, obviously, border forts can defend my own territories from enemy assassins and spies, but it's nice just to get the extra insurance, you know. Spies are useful because they can boost my loyalty of my own provinces, while also just like making sure, like extra double sure that my provinces are safe from those uh, enemy agents. So yeah, let's get these guys out. I just want one in every province that I own and then I can go back to training bishops. I have bishop coverage on a lot of the map right now. Yeah, a lot of the map, I'm, I'm getting there, you know, I just don't have Morocco and Iberia and then a few of the islands. And that's pretty much it, yeah. So let's just get those spies out in my own territories, look after my own people. I have been catching enemy assassin attempts just using my own border forts, so that feels a little bit sketchy. Um, so yeah, let's make sure that I don't get my family members killed here. Oh man, the Holy Roman Emperor has already been captured and executed. That did not take long. Uh, they do have a new one that has been elected, elected so... Yeah, there's that. Alright, what's, what's going on here? So the Novgorods want to marry one of their princesses off to my, um, my dude, Prince Valdemar. Uh, does it matter? They, they're like on their, they're on their deathbed. They're just trying to save their princess, essentially. Yeah, the Novgorods have one province left. Does it matter? I have no intention on ever attacking... Yeah, let's just let's let's let Prince Valdemar have a have a wife. Why not? Let's see, Prince Harold. I think this is my. I don't know. He's not my next in line. I don't think. I think he's my second in line. Uh, very loyal. Good. Uh, that's always a good thing. Let's see this. Are you a one-star general? Can't quite tell. Looks like you are, but you are a gentle knight plus three morale. That's going to be good. Yep. 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 Secret blackmailer, and strange, okay. And Prince Valdemar, who are you exactly? Okay, so you're, you're one of the brothers. Alright, you're, yeah, you're a geezer. So, I just gave you a wife, but it's probably not gonna matter. The Novgorods, yeah, they're still alive. Yeah, it's funny the Mongols have not wiped them out. Wiped them out. I guess the boyars are a good unit, right? Like, they have a bunch of these boyars, and they're pretty fantastic. But still, you would think that uh, the Mongols would finish the job. <laughs> that did not take long. <laughs> Holy moly. The French have already been excommunicated. Wow. I mean, they are doing quite well fighting the English. I wonder, like, <laughs> what faction it was for, you know? Because they're fighting so many people right now. Well, I think it's just the Germans and the English, but still, it feels like, a <laughs> feels like they are doing a lot. So, I 
you know, I do, I guess, kind of want them to win this war now so that I can uh, justify taking the English Isle. This is going to be tough, though. That's a lot of royal knights for France to chew through. I feel like they have the forces to do it, but, you know, that's going to be a tough fight. They have been fighting here in Flanders. The Germans have been trying to save the English here. In fact, I never even checked. Are the English and Germans allies? They're not even allies. That's interesting. The Germans were just doing it out of the kindness of their hearts, I suppose. Because they were trying to relieve this siege here in Flanders, and that did not work out for them. Yeah, that's interesting that they were excommunicated. The French were pushed out of Tyrolia, but then they just took Venice. So, yeah, it's kind of a pretty good trade, I would say. Um, yeah, well, the French, like, how was their... Their influence is still very good. I wonder if the excommunication has affected their generals at all. It doesn't look like it. Yeah, like, they're going to be just fine, aren't they? Yeah, their, their generals are loving it. Like, they're like, this is, this is great. We love this. This is, this is our favorite thing, just fighting the world, you know? Yep. Yep, they're 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 into it. So I'm going to yeah continue to root for them. I guess I, I want them if they can yeah take take North Umbria off the English Scotland. Yeah, it's not too much here honestly. Feudal sergeants and uh, Highland clansmen, not too much of an obstacle I'd say. I I would like that. My income is dipping. Yeah, it's, it's oh my god, I'm making six fifty one right now. Oh man. Obviously, I have huge armies, <laughs> you know, like I'm just making sure that no one attacks me and uh, Yeah, I'm still at war with the Germans. They still have not accepted that ceasefire In fact, let me let me try to get a ceasefire with the Turks, you know, because then I, I, I still there's one port, you know It's not much, but I could be trading with that one port that they have so where where are they? Yeah, here they are Let's see if I can get that ceasefire with the Turks and let's try again with the Germans See if we can get that ceasefire with them. Because, yeah. It, it would be nice just to get those ceasefires. And go back to trading with... Well, they yeah, they lost Venice. That's the one port that they had that I was, I was trading with. So I guess it doesn't matter. Um, still, though. Yeah, I would like to take England. Just because there's this mechanic in this game that I think is really nifty it's really organic and I love it it's the idea that the ships so so your ship's upkeep increases the further the further away it is from one of your family family ports and um, therefore the way to decrease your ship's up, upkeep is to take island provinces that um, you know are further away from like your home territories and that can just by that degree can you know, Increase your income just by decreasing your upkeep on your boats. Which is really nice. I was really like dismayed when I first played this game and I saw that Sardinia and Corsica have such weak incomes. It was really sad. I was like, oh man, they don't like really make much. They don't have any trade goods, you know. Um, Malta, yeah, same thing here. And then Crete and Rhodes and Cyprus also just don't make that much money. And I was like really bummed out. But then I saw the silver lining there is that... You can still take them as these like far, far flung kind of like trading regions and just use them to decrease the upkeep of your faraway boats. Because if we look here, you know, I'm paying support costs of 60 for this uh, long boat here. What about my caravels uh, support costs of 100 per boat? Yeah, that's a lot. That definitely is a lot. So taking a region, you know, like even hmm, taking roads off of the Turks just so I can get like that port you know just so I can get that port nearby that's an idea that's an idea I, I wanted Sicily though it's not that bad to so if I have a king who is of old age and he's about to die soon and if I go to war with the papacy just take Sicily and then I get excommunicated, but then my king dies, that excommunication will go away. So there's an idea there. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's an option. 
my king currently is pretty old. He, he's on, you know, he's on his way, 63 years old. But right now I'm eyeing this. I'm eyeing England. And yeah, that's, that's really what I want right now. But I want France to finish the job first before I take it. Man, the French are being aggressive. Jeez, oh, Pete. They are now taking Ile de France. And they've also taken Normandy off the English as well. They are just going for it. They are blitzing hard. Uh, okay, so my king has died. Okay. And my heir has taken over. It looks like there's going to be a German rebellion here in Venice. Helping them out. Okay, that might push out the French. Although, they have nowhere to retreat to. So that's going to be a tough fight for them. I am the richest. Okay, I kind of doubt that. <laughs> Um, maybe they're not counting my upkeep. <laughs> Let's see, another Novgorod prince has died of an illness, but his heir has taken command. And, okay, interesting. The Pope is asking uh, for a crusade against the French. Hmm. Oh, wait, I can't crusade, can I? No, I can't. Why is he asking me? Yeah, the Danes can't crusade, which is unfortunate, because the Danes did crusade, historically. Um... Yeah, like didn't even in the first crusade, I get not even not even the northern crusades, which you know obviously they were a part of, but even in the first crusade, didn't I not like not a king because kings weren't, you know they didn't want kings to go on the first crusade, but um, I thought they had some 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 guys go along with the first crusade. Yeah, I can't. Mm, my memory doesn't it doesn't know enough. I don't know enough, but I but I feel like they did participate. And, yeah, that's silly. It's silly in this game that you can't crusade as the Danes. That's a little bit unfortunate, but... The Pope is giving, giving me money for some reason. Uh, I don't know what I've done to deserve that, but I'll take it. And, yeah, we keep catching assassins. Just making me nervous. Just, like, uh, Jesus, everyone. Everyone is sending assassins my way. Holy moly. All right, we've got a master merchant here in Norway. That's going to help my income, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The Turks don't want a ceasefire. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Assholes. Oh, let's see. This governor plus some happiness. Alright, I'll take it. Always drunk. I don't know about that. Okay, well. How's my income now? Making two grand. Okay. I how did that did that change literally just from Getting a master merchant built in Norway? Like, that can't be. That can't be. Yeah, what the hell just happened? Did I... How am I making more money? Like, a lot more money. Was it more than just the master, master merchant that was built? Hmm, I don't know. That's not counting the Pope's... Handout, is it? I don't know. That's a, that was a little weird. Yeah, I don't really understand that one, but... In any case... Oh yeah, let me check out my, my new son. Or no, not my new son. My new king. That's right. Yeah. One star general. Three influence. Oh, okay. Oh man, that's rough. Uh. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Man, oh man. Just can't catch a, catch a break. Three influence is rough. Natural leader, so that's... Good. And yes. Yeah, is, is, oh, his is, is acumen's better. That's right. My old king had an acumen of two and he has an acumen of three. That helps. <laughs> Holy moly. Wow. Yeah, that helps out a bit. It just. Hopefully my generals are okay. Loyalty wise. Hmm. A couple of them are down to three loyalty. It's not good. Is it down to one loyalty on him. That's not good. Uh, these guys are okay, I think. What about Prussia? Yeah, Prussia's okay. Lithuania is... We, we might be okay. Okay, two loyalties, not good. Yeah, two loyalties, not great. Um... Two loyalty, yeah, we, we might, ooh, there's, okay, there's a few guys here in Novgorod with two loyalty, ooh, one loyalty, damn, okay. Novgorod has some trouble, some trouble, some, 
looking in general is up there. I'll, I will have to keep an eye on that, and I might have to shuffle some guys around. Um, but that's going to have to wait until next episode, yeah, because this has been uh, kind of kind of got blue balled here, you know. Kind of thought that there's going to be attacks by the Mongols, and then it was looking like there was going to be attacks by the Germans. And none of that happened, and a lot has changed in this one episode. So, in any case, you know what? I might attack uh, England uh, soon, maybe. We'll see if the French can break through here and take the whole island. That's what I would like. But it does seem like they're focusing more on the mainland. So, we will see. But in any case, that's all going to have to wait until next time. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this one, and thank you very much for watching. This has been Conisip playing Medieval Total War. Thank you very much, and goodbye.